family goes astray, he'll make a way. Oh yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. When friends walk away, he'll be there to stay. I know he will. When all your bills are due, he'll see you through. I know he will. When the doctors give you up, he'll lift you up. I know he will. to be in the presence of the Lord today. Um, as I always say, y'all know my favorite scripture is where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Um, I am excited today. It's Thanksgiving. Um, it's, it's such a glorious season because we are a, a few of the ones that made it over um, after the pandemic. You know, some people did not make it through the pandemic. So we want to give God praise for that today. And um, I just came to bring this worship song. It's called, I Will Bless the Lord. And um, you get up on your feet today. Let's give God some praise. Let's show some Thanksgiving today. That should, uh, you look nice today. Say something nice to your neighbor. Look over, shake. While I wave the hand What up, what up, what up Put 
church say amen we come this morning to praise God from whom all blessings flow we come this morning to say thank you Lord thank you for what you've done thank you for what you're doing and thank you for what you're going to do in the future because the scripture tells us that one day he's going to break through that eastern sky and he's coming back for us to take us home where we can praise him and thank him through all eternity so we welcome you today, those here in the sanctuary, those who are on live stream. Prepare your hearts because we have come to give him praise and thanksgiving for his mercy endureth forever. Prepare your hearts for a wonderful message today from Reverend Swope on how we appreciate God. And a spirit-filled devotion to follow by young Mia Functions. Let's welcome her now. Good morning, Bravi and friends of Bravi. Happy Thanksgiving. My name is Mia Funches, and I'll be doing the devotion for today. Um, the scripture will come from the book of Romans, chapter 8, uh, verse 37 through 39, the NIV version. Know in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now let us pray. God, thank you for being a mighty warrior and a strong protector. You call me to stand firm, not in my own strength and might, but in yours. Your power has no end and your authority demands even the demons to obey your will. Help me, O oh God, to rely on your matchless power to stand firm when I fall into sin, doubt, and weariness, grant me the faith to rise again, trusting in your faithful promises. Grant me victory rooted in Jesus, that I may be faithful and loyal to you. In Jesus Christ we pray, amen.
this building. Come on, say I'm free. 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 Yeah, 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 I'm free. Jesus, I'm free in you, Jesus. I'm free in you, Jesus. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. 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 Yeah, yeah. The power of life and death is in your tongue, yeah. The power of life and death is in your tongue, yeah. And if you begin to declare it, if you begin to proclaim it, oh, but shut up, I believe that anything that happens in the earthly realm is a product of everything that is happening in the spiritual realm. And you gotta open up your mouth and say, I am free. Praise God for Brother Young leading us in worship service and ministering to us in song. I rose, I rose to acknowledge our visitors and guests here. So if you're a visitor or guest, please stand and remain standing until you be, you've been acknowledged. Amen. Amen. Praise God. My name is Christopher Robinson. I'm the interim pastor here. And on the behalf of the entire Broadview family, we praise God that your your have come to worship with us in this Thanksgiving service. It is our prayer that if you have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, that when the gospel message has been preached, that you will come and give your life to Christ. But if you are a Christian and you don't have a church home, we'd love to have you here. Once again, we just want to thank you and continue to worship and praise God. He's, he's worthy to be praised. Amen? You may be seated. time that you didn't even understand um, him completely that's my life my life was saying yes and doing things at a young age for me to be here I'm 26 now for me to be here at this age um, a lot of sacrifices but one thing that I know for sure that it was God's grace and that it was his mercy that literally had his hand on me it was so many different things that was out there that should have taken me there were so many things out there that should have destroyed me there were so many things out there that should have wiped me out but by the grace of god i am standing here before you today and i and i and i, and I, and I proclaim today that it is god's grace it's been your mercy and it's it's been your grace that has kept me to this, to this very day. I should have been dead and sleeping, sleeping in my grave. But oh Lord, oh Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It was your grace, yeah, 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 yeah. Watch this, we're gonna sing this again. It's been your mercy. Come on, lift your hands this 
so much to be thankful for. Psalms 34 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all time. All time. We thank him for what he has done. Let us pray. Father, we thank you as we celebrate what you have done. We give thanks to you, Lord, for it's you that have provided for us. It's you that keep us, Lord. It's you that guide us daily, Lord, and we just want to say thank you, Lord. We pray, Lord, as we present our tithes and offerings to you, Lord, that we'll give you glory and honor, Lord. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Looks like we're still in the spirit of Thanksgiving today, huh? And um, so I'm gonna get right into it. Um, this worship song, it's a beautiful melody. Um, if y'all notice something about me, I'm like a little old man in a young person body. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. Um, this song, it just simply says, Thank
somebody somebody's got a testimony go to your books if you will or I'll direct your attention to the 26th chapter of Deuteronomy blessed Thanksgiving to one and all there is no thanks without God there is no Thanksgiving without the work of his son Jesus Christ there is no power to rejoice in thanksgiving without the Holy Spirit indwelling in you. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Mia, God bless you. God keep you. Thank you for that devotion this morning. Amen. Brother Larry, God bless you. Keep singing songs of Zion. To my pastor, Pastor Christopher Robinson, God bless you. To everyone that is here, God keep you. This is a good time to feel good. 26th chapter of Deuteronomy, verses 1 through 11, will be the base of our discourse. From the New King James Version of God's Holy Word, I will read these key verses 9, 10, and 11 in your hearing. I want you to position yourself somewhere in this message. And somewhere along the line, I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to take control of your worship. Yeah, I want you to make a joyful noise somewhere around in this time, for he is good. I'm going to start with the ninth verse, and I'll introduce that verse with the formal name instead of the pronoun. Deuteronomy, the 26th chapter, starting with the ninth verse where you'll find these words, God has brought us to this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which you, O Lord, have given me. Then you shall set it before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God so you shall rejoice in every good thing which the Lord your God has given to you and your house, you and the Levite and the stranger who is among you. I don't typically do this, but I want you to help me with the title of the text for this time together and repeat after me, God, you are appreciated. Why don't you go ahead and just give God some praise right now? Right now. I thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. I don't take, God, your works in my life for granted. And I'll start right here. God, I thank you because I know for myself that I am free indeed. I am not bound, no longer chains holding me. Let's get right to it. First Peter, the first chapter, verses 18 and 19 reads like this. Not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. But I am redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. My freedom from the penalty, the presence, and the power of sin has been paid in full. I'm not under 
under the curse of the law, which is eternal damnation, thank you, Lord, I am free indeed. I am redeemed, bought with a price. When you're looking at me, you're looking at a free brother. I want you to get this. But I'm not by myself because somebody has that same story that God has freed your soul. You're not shackled by the limitations that's put on you by this society. You are free to think, speak, and act for the glory of God and if for nothing else, for that reason alone, lift up your voice and say thank you. I will preach myself happy. Moses in our text is instructing the people of Israel to appreciate God in the midst of enjoying what God has blessed them with. Do you know that every blessing you get from God is perfect? Because God can't do anything that's imperfect and everything he does is perfect. So every time you get a blessing from God, that's God showering his perfection on your life. So Moses is talking to this new generation, right? Because they've been through some stuff years before. But Moses is talking to the group of people that are getting ready to enter into the promised land. He's providing them some stipulations. These are the things that you should do as you prepare yourself to take to the land that God has promised you. Moses said, let me help you out just a little bit. Find yourself in this thing. With your new life in Christ, let it be known that God, you are appreciated. It's all right to say thanksgiving, but appreciation is exhibited in your lifestyle. It's not caught up in commercialism. It has nothing to do with turkey and dressing and all that other kind of stuff, and that's all right. God, you are appreciated because of who you are. God is appreciated because God gives good things, because God blesses us to testify. And because of those reasons, we're going to take a few seconds right now and give God thanks. Look at our text. God gives good things. The first and second verse of our text. And it shall be when you come into the land, this is Moses speaking to the new generation. He's instructing them. He says, when you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance and you possess it and dwell in it, that you shall take some of the first of all the produce of the ground which you shall bring from your land that the Lord your God has given you and put it in a basket and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. Moses is helping Israel as they walk into this promised land. He is charging them to offer God their best because God has blessed them. What are your first fruits? What do you offer to God with your life? You know, you can't walk up to God with leftovers. That don't work. You got to give God the best of who you are, how you are, how you got here, how you think, how you talk, how you speak, how you conduct yourself because God has given you his best. So he's telling them this offering to God in this context is what was called the feast of first fruits. When the Israelites harvested what they planted in the promised land, they were in the promised land harvesting. They were to select the best crops, put those crops in a basket in a particular order, and then offer the best of their crops to God. That's what Moses said. And look, they had all kind of crops, wheat and barley and pomegranate and figs and dates. They had olives and all types of things because God blesses in variety. When God blesses, he blesses you in more than just one way. You may see a blessing that God has done for you, but God has blessed you with some things that you have not seen. Somebody was asleep last night, and while you were sleeping, God was blessing. Because God gives good things. Because he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all 
that we ask or think according to the power, watch this, that works in us. Somebody's table going to be blessed with some good stuff later on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Because God is that kind of God. Israel was to acknowledge God as the one who gives good things, which provides support and comfort for their natural lives. God gives you things for your natural life. I want you to understand, because some people say, no, God ain't doing that. I'm working to get that. Do you know that God is sovereign? God governs how he blesses you. God governs how he moves in your life. The Bible says that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. That is a sovereign God. In other words, yep, you have free will, and yes, you can think your thoughts, and yes, you can do your things, but God has already gone before you in many of the things that you are going after to bless your way so that it would prosper to his glory. God is worthy to be praised. What I'm telling you is that Israel was to acknowledge the one who gives good things, was to provide comfort and support for their natural lives, but we know God does more than that. Yeah, you know you're intelligent, but that's because God has blessed you with intelligence. You know you're wise because God has given you wisdom. Look at y'all, y'all some good looking people. You think you had anything to do with the way that you look? Yeah, you need to maintain it, but you wasn't born that way. God gave you good looks. God continues to give when we stop giving. He's worthy. Oh, come on, let's have some Thanksgiving right now. We are blessed with family. Larry was singing about it. We're blessed with friends. We're blessed with loved ones. We're blessed with houses that we did not make, clothes that we didn't put together, food that we did not plant. We have more than most. We are blessed because God keeps on giving. Help me, somebody. James says, Every good gift and every perfect gift from above comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. In other words, God is not an Indian giver. When he gives it to you, you stuck with it. You need to work it out because God has blessed you so you can bless somebody else even when it doesn't seem like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard sometimes. Even when it's rough. Even in the quote unquote midnight hour. God is giving us good things in those times or working things out for our good. Either way, God, you are appreciate it. Moses spoke to the new generation. When you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance, wherever God leads you, he told them, possess it and dwell in it. In other words, take ownership of where you are right now for the glory of God. Don't complain about where you are. Take ownership of where you are. Possess where you are and dwell in it for the glory of God. Impact somebody else's life for the glory of God. Watch your steps so that somebody else can see Jesus shining in you for the glory of God. Possess what God has given you. Dwell in the place where you are. Give God glory with your life. I'm by myself. That's all right. That's all right. The Bible says the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. So use the good things that God gives you to speak life. And let this world know that God, you are appreciated because you give good things. And then God... We appreciate you because you bless us to testify. Moses said, remember to look back just a little bit 
and see what you've been through. I think the songwriter says, my soul looks back in wonder at how I got over. It's not what I used to be, it's what I am right now. But when I know what I am right now, in comparison to what I used to be, my soul looks back in wonder how I got over. Look, the third and fourth verse says, and you shall go to the one who is the priest in those days and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the country, watch this, which for the note takers, write these three words down. The Lord swore, write them down, to our fathers to give us. Then the priests shall take the basket, your first fruits of your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. These people were doing a new thing because they had come to a new place that the Lord swore that they would come to. And when God says it's going to happen, I promise you that God is not slack concerning his promises. If God says it's for you, nobody can touch it. You need to walk into it because God has promised it. God is getting you ready to do a new thing that you've never done before. God is getting you prepared to go somewhere that you've never been before. And God is not slack concerning his promises. This was a time of reflection. This right here in this, in this context, this was a time of reflection. This was church. This was a time of worship. This was a time of praise. This was a time of adulation. This was a time of thanksgiving. This was not a somber occasion. I know sometimes we have a tendency to read into passages of text and think, man, this must have been heavy. But no, there was some joy going on right in this context. And Moses is telling folks, go ahead and work out in your joy sometimes. You've been dealing in all these other things from time to time. Why don't you let joy work in you? Why don't you release with your rejoicing in the Lord? Do you know praise is healthy for you? Praise makes you feel good on the inside. It spiritually works its way on the inside. It comes out on the outside. And every now and again, if you need a little bit of exercise, if you need that plasma to flow in your blood, you can just praise God. Jump up and down and say, thank you Lord. Yeah. So this was a place where in the transition for the Israelites, and I'm going to put this on you real quick. It was a time for the Israelites to celebrate their transition. Hang in there with me now. From being nomads, N-O-M-A-D-S to becoming agrarians yeah a-g-r-a-r-i-a-n-s i want to help you we'll get there verse 5 says and you shall answer and say before the lord your god my father was a syrian about to perish and he went down to egypt and dwelt there few in number and there he became a nation great and populous. Moses is telling them how to tell the story and helping them out. Their forefather, Jacob, Moses says, remember him, how he was a wandering Syrian or a nomad. A nomad is one who moves around from place to place. They reflected on when Jacob fled his home in Beersheba, passed through Syria, hung out with his uncle in Laban. They recalled when a famine came to Canaan and caused Jacob to migrate to Egypt. Always on the move, Jacob could not quite get settled in the promised land. Things happen in our lives sometimes Sometimes that's beyond our control and we have to move sometimes but the word says just trust in the Lord how will you trust with all of your heart don't lean not on just what you understand but in all of your ways acknowledge God and God will do the rest verse 6 says but the Egyptians they were not done telling this story the Egyptians mistreated us. They afflicted us. They laid hard bondage on us. I'm here to tell you that there was a time 
when your soul did not have a place to prosper in perfect peace. Without Jesus, the Son of God, as your Savior, your soul was a spiritual nomad, wandering around in need of a home not built with hands. Even now, you know that you have experienced some hard times. You've been mistreated. You've been afflicted. Folks trying to damage your identity in Christ and mess up your mind in Christ. But Moses encouraged those folks, and he's telling us right now, but you tell your story. Look at verse 7. says that then, after all we've been through, we cried out to the Lord, God of our fathers. And three more words. The Lord heard our voice and looked on our afflictions and our labor and our oppression. After all you've done, after all you've been through, after you've done all that you can do, you took all your medicine and you paid all your bills. You were transparent with the therapist and real with your relatives. You stood in the picket lines and you jumped up and used your voice in the courtroom. God says you've done everything that you can do. But sometimes, and all those things have their place, but sometimes you just need to cry out to the Lord. Sometimes you just need to open up your mouth. You need to get on your knees because they were in a place where actually they were literally bowing down to God and they were just crying out, Father, help me. Lord, save me. God, deliver me. Lord, fix me. Father, adjust me. God, uphold me with your right hand. Sometimes you got to cry. So they cried out unto the Lord, and the Lord, watch me now, heard their voices. Look at verse 8 and 9. Find yourself somewhere in this. I'm hoping you will find yourself in this, because you've been through some stuff. What you sitting here looking like right now is not what you've been through. So you have a testimony to say, God, you are appreciated. So when they cried out, look what happened in verse 8 and 9. It says, so the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm. Thank you, Father. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I know we got to wrap up because y'all ready to go and eat. But God was working in the lives of these people and he's working in your life right now with an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He has who has. God has who has. God has. Who am I talking about? God has. Who's the way out of no way? God has. Who's the bright and the morning star? God has. God has. He's worked it out for us. And what God has done is brought us to this place and has given us this land. A land flowing with milk and honey. He's clothed you in your right mind. He kept you when you couldn't keep yourself. He watched over you when you was hanging out with brother and sister so-and-so. He checked your bank account when you was getting ready to make a jacked up investment. He helped you with legal issues when you knew you broke the law. God was there by your side. He brought you out when nobody else could. If you will for one second, why don't you take some time and give thanks because God, you are. So, we give you thanks. Is this making sense to y'all? Y'all getting it? So, then if y'all getting it, then we give you thanks, God. We give you thanks, God. We give you thanks, God. You didn't have to do it, Lord. But you did. We give you thanks, God. 
Look, I got more talents than I can count, and I've used a lot of them, and some of them have helped my lifestyle in terms of me earning a living, but it wasn't because of me. It's because God looked favorably upon me. So I thank you, God. Once upon a time, I was wretched. I was miserable. I was ruined. I was lowly. I was detestable. I was hurt. I was broken. I was mistrusted. I was disfused. I was taken off my path. But God sent his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. All right, I'm over time. 10, 11, and we go. And now, behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land, which you, O oh Lord, have given me. Moses is saying, tell it all. And then when you tell it all, don't forget to rejoice in it all. So he tells the people to say, then you shall set it before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. I was just showing you how it was done. They were literally bowing down in the presence of God. So you shall rejoice in every good thing. 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 So Do not take God for granted. I'm going to wrap it up because I know we're ready to go. It is not guaranteed that we will ever be in this space again. If it is, show me where it's written. Then I'll preach a different sermon. But since we're here in this time, in this place where God and his sovereignty has brought us together, listen, we got some good looking young people. I'm looking at a few of them right now. We need to be thanking God for young people in our lives because they are game changers as they're working for the glory of God. You ought to go ahead and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So you shall rejoice in every good thing which the Lord your God has given to you and your house and the Levite and the stranger who is among you. I'm going to jump right to it. God said, said, bless the people first in your household. Matter of fact, bless those who are in your family. Stop all this fussing and fighting with your blood relatives and have a good time in the Lord. We don't have as much time as we think. So we need to redeem the time with some blessings, with some love, with some peace, with some joy, with some kindness to our family. And then he says to the Levites, to the people in the church, to the church leaders, to those who operate the church, to those who serve in the church, rejoice with them in good things that God has given you. Thank God for ministry. Thank God for Broadview Missionary Baptist Church. Look back in the past from time to time. And instead of criticizing, thank God for what he has brought you to right now. You didn't get here by yourself. Somebody helped you in the steps that were ordered by the Lord. And I'm done. So when you rejoice to God with your life, you rejoice to the strangers also. Do you know that people are watching you that, don't, that you don't know? They're watching you. You don't know them, but they're watching you. I got an email the other day. Said, I heard you speak, Mr. Swope, in such and such a class. But what I heard you say didn't sound like typical educational rhetoric. I want to come and see you because I want to know what exactly what you're talking about. Then the email said, because it resonated with my spirit. I don't know who that person is and haven't met that person yet. But what I do know is if we would just say, God, you are appreciated. He will move in our lives. He will change the course of your direction for his glory. Here we go. I'm going to sit down. I promise you I'm going to sit down. God, you are appreciated. So we thank you right now. We are thankful for the ability to reason. Thankful to be in this service. 
thankful for the word of God. Thankful we have people to argue with and those same folks to reconcile with. Be thankful for the days off of work and the days that you have a job where you can work. Be thankful for your children. I'm thankful for my son. I'm thankful for his wife. I'm thankful for my grandbabies. I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for my mother. I'm thankful for my mother-in-law. I'm thankful for my father. I'm thankful for my cousin. I'm thankful for my parents in ministry. I'm by myself. Be thankful when you cry because those who sow in tears shall reap with sounds of joy. Be thankful when you laugh because a merry heart does good like medicine. I plan on doing some laughing later on today. I'm looking forward to having a good time with my people. Be thankful for peace and quiet. Young people, turn off the TV. Disconnect your cell phone. Get off social media and find you a quiet place with the Lord and watch how he changes the direction of your young life because God can be found in the stillness of the moments in your life. Be thankful for love, joy, happiness, skills, abilities, thoughts, ideas, and the passion to pursue your purpose. Be thankful that you fall sometimes because a righteous man may fall seven times, but the word says he has the power to get back up. You can't be held down because you got Holy Ghost bounce back power. Get on your feet. Get on your feet. Get on your feet. Get on your feet. Heaven will not look like what we display. I'm just being real with y'all. Heaven is going to be a place where there's going to be noise because the redeemed of the Lord is going to be reconciled, you know, with the groom. The church will be consummated. And whenever you go to a wedding, you know wedding is not quiet when you go to the reception. All kind of noise going on. So when we are brought together with the bridegroom, there's going to be joy, there's going to be happiness, there's going to be peace. So I'm going to give you five seconds to think about two things, maybe three, that God has done for you. Look back over your life like the children of Israel. Think back on your past and let's give God 10 seconds of everything that we can. Go ahead. One, two, three. Thank you, Lord. for heaven get your soul ready for that matter of fact if y'all looking for me in heaven I'm gonna be hanging out with the musicians I'm as more specific I'll be hanging out with the drummers in heaven so if you're looking for me in heaven I'm with the drummers God says that God we say to God God you are appreciated God made a way with his son Jesus Christ above everything else we have to be thankful for Jesus Christ should be first and foremost on our list. Without Jesus, the turkey and dressing don't taste as sweet. Without Jesus, the job ain't that good. Without Jesus, the promotion is really just another promotion. Without Jesus, you can have your social justice agendas, but it don't mean nothing if it ain't built on truth. And Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can come to the Father unless they come by me. Jesus is calling for somebody to be saved right now. Yeah, you think it's Thanksgiving, and it is Thanksgiving, but Jesus says, I will give you a new reason to be thankful because I will redeem your soul. So if you're here right now, you ought to come. If you're here right now, you ought to come. I know we're over time and we'll close down. But if you're here right now, you ought to come. Jesus stands at the door of your heart. He's knocking. He says, whosoever will, open up the door of your heart and receive me and I will come in and fellowship with you and we can have sweet communion together. That means your soul can be saved. If you're watching on live stream, give your life to the Lord. 
Don't eat a piece of anything unless you have made your peace with the Lord sure. Yeah. So we praying, whosoever will. God bless you. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, brothers. God bless you. You may be seated. We thank you that you would know that God, you are appreciated. Every message should have a call to action. So here's the call to action for the saints. Sometime throughout the course of the day, you say these words outside of the church, because you know we do churchy things in the church. It's easy to get folks to do churchy things in the church. You take it elsewhere and you utter these words and don't do it in silence. You just say, God, you are appreciated. Break out in the middle of wherever you are. Just say, God, you are appreciated. What are you gonna say? God, you are appreciated. Amen and God bless you. Pastor, are we all clear? We thank you one and all for tuning in. We pray that this time has touched your hearts. We pray that you're a little bit better than what you were just a few minutes ago. We pray that you will have a Thanksgiving beyond any Thanksgiving that you've ever had because you are recognizing God as the one who is to be appreciated. Now let us pray. Stand on your feet as we give our benediction. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. We want to let you know that God, you are appreciated. And not only for today, but for as long as you give us breath, that will be the way that we live unto you. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his joy with exceeding glory. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And let everybody say, Amen. Amen, and thank God, and may God bless you, and may God keep you.